Hey, buddies, Potato Whiskey here, and welcome to another Saving Your Disaster save file game. I have not even looked at this save file until this exact moment, and I see many things that are not good. I see some things that are okay. I see many things that are really not good. Uh, but this, this one comes in from uh, somebody on YouTube. Uh, Hello, Potato. I was playing Teddy Roosevelt, Rough Rider, and found myself boxed in by the Aztecs, and now I don't really know how I should go about a war to stop them. Also, I have a barbarian problem. I have no mods, and I was playing with secret societies, monopolies and corporations, heroes and barbarian clans. Gathering storm, large earth, true start location. Well, I don't know how to tell you this, but it's turn 153 and you're there is no universe in which you go to war with the Aztecs when you're building catapults and they have field cannons on deity. Um, so just let's let's just take that off the table. First of all, we got some we got some serious issues to fix here. Let's take a look at your capital. You've got Magnus established in your capital with surplus logistics and provision, and you have two cities with plenty of room for more. So. Oh my goodness, right, Let, let's let's take a look at this, right? Press nine. The government plaza is nice. The campus is great. The encampment is fine because you're making a use of adjacency. I like the idea of going for a religion here. Uh, I pr appreciate that you've gone for Protestantism here. You've gone for reliquaries. You do have, a, you do, okay, so you have a win condition here with tourism. You've cross-cultural dialogue, getting you a little bit more science. Pagodas are actually really high value and Crusade could potentially lead you into the direction of making a late game war play if you can get the passive religion effect onto these guys. The most important thing that I need to do is to probably load your earliest autosave that you provided, which is approximately 10 turns before this. An extra 10 turns of fixing this will probably help me a lot. But I tell you what, we're going to do it pure. We're going to go straight from this save file because I looked and I could not access that. So the great thing is you have Hercules, but he's a, and he has two charges, but he's about to die. Oh, this is grim. Oh, this is very grim. There's a lot that's gone wrong here. What do you have resource-wise? You do have Diplo favor you can sell to the AI at least to get gold. We get 75 gold per turn. We're 588 gold plus 47 per turn. Let's take the gold right now because we can start to make some executor decisions. Uh, executive decision number one, we're starting to build settlers. We're also going to faith purchase a pagoda for those diplomatic favor points because we could sell those to the AI. Um, we're also going to purchase a temple that will boost divine right, getting us monarchy. And then we're going to faith purchase another pagoda to get another diplomatic favor per turn because we can sell that to the AI as well. This is basically gold per turn that we can use to turn our empire around. Where have you gone wrong here? Really, you just you didn't make enough cities. You didn't make enough builders and you didn't improve your tiles. You have some improved tiles, but not nearly enough. The real problem here is a lack of cities. In a very, very big way, you have not made enough cities and you also never dealt with your barbarian problems. You have decent infrastructure, you have a stable, but if I take a look at New Orleans, like look at how many of these tiles that we're working that are unimproved. We need to fix that. And the best way to fix that is with a builder. Let's have a look at your trade routes as well. You do have one trade route from Washington to New Orleans. That's literally the wrong way around. It should go the other way from New Orleans to Washington. Um, you've got that backwards, which is kind of crap. So let's start with builders. Uh, we're going to come in here. We are going to switch to monarchy. Boosh. Because we can pick up more diplomatic favor there. We could try to squeak out a diplo win. Did you at least... Oh, you do have six... Di I think, okay. Executive decision here. Your best win condition here is to go for a diplomatic victory. You already have really good diplo favor. You got the Mahabodhi Temple, uh, which is worth, I believe... Uh, it's here. It is worth two diplomatic victory points. What you also want to get is if you can get it is the Patala Palace. Unlikely that we can get that. But more importantly is if you can get the Statue of Liberty. If you can get the Statue of Liberty, there's, there's a potential here. But I think this is with the Diplo favor that you're generating, the potential for a victory is actually here. So let's immediately go over feudalism. Feudalism is one of the most important technologies in the entire game because you want to get access to serfdom. Now, to put that into perspective, how important serfdom is, we are paying 70 production for 
three bill charges. If we have feudalism, we are paying 70 production for five bill charges. That is a 66% increase in the efficiency of our investment into production, which is means we, we need to invest less to get the same amount and our we get a faster return on investment because every chunk of return on investment comes sooner because we're getting five instead of three, right? So that's, it's, it's, it's very, very important that we get the serfdom card to the point where I'm actually going to go for a second settler here. You do not have enough cities. That is for damn sure. Your biggest, biggest problem is you do not have enough cities. And I know you might be looking at this land and being like, potato, how am I going to get more cities in here? Well, let me tell you, there are things you can do. First of all, this should be a city. If I press four, you can see this is a decent city location. It has a reef. It has, you know, some potential. Um, let's have a look. One, two, three. Also, you should have had a galley by now. I'm going to buy that galley. There's plus two error score, which could potentially get you a golden age, which might get you back into the game. Ah, oh, it's already the Renaissance era. If you had gotten a monumentality golden age, that could have got you back into this game. Unlucky. Uh, we are definitely going to take retainers. Plus one amenity is really, really good. Autocratic legacy is not good. You almost always, always want to get classical republic, right? You want to get that all cities receive plus one housing and plus one amenity. This is one of the best wild cards in the entire game. You can basically plug it in and never plug it out. It's one of the, just hands down one of the best. Autocratic, Autocratic legacy is okay. We don't need Corvi. We don't need this. Urban planning is fine. We definitely want Ilkum to build builders faster. And we definitely want colonization to make those faster. We don't care about charismatic leader. We do care about discipline for fighting barbarians. Uh, we don't care about maneuvers. So we're going to plug that out. We will like Limes later, but not right now, or Limes. For now, I'm going to plug in Autocratic Legacy to get that small boost to yields in my capital. And I'm going to take Natural Philosophy for the small boost in science. These will be replaced pretty quickly with other cards. The reason... Oh, okay. We've got a religion problem. Um, Hercules died. Super unfortunate. We can get this kill on the Skirmisher. And Wukong can kill the Crossbowman. Perfect. We need to start thinking about how do you win a diplomatic victory? So the two... The most important part of a diplomatic victory is actually your culture income, because there are late game things inside this area here that really help for a diplomatic victory. There's, there's kind of two really important things. A, you get a religion. B, build industrial zones. And C, have a lot of culture. Now, unfortunately, it's probably past the time where we could have got Leonardo da Vinci. He's one of the best, go he's one of the best engineers to get when you're going for a victory, a, um, a diplomatic victory. So I'm going to place an aqueduct here because that would also potentially increase the adjacency of this holy site. And then I would also like to get myself a industrial zone right there. Now, industrial zones get adjacency from mines and lumber mills. Uh, there is a carbon recapture project that we can pump into industrial zones that will get us a lot of diplomatic favor in the late game. So that's why we want industrial zones. Always set your capital city on food and production. It's a really, really good combo. And it, I mean, honestly, you can go to every single city in your empire and focus on a combination of food and production, and it will generally choose good tiles, generally. Now, the good news is we do have inquisitors, so we can do a little bit of religious fighting, and we're going to recruit some more with the faith that we have. Now, I spent a lot of faith on certain things, which sucks. And I also got us a galley. We will want another galley uh, when we have the cash for it. We're also going to want to purchase luxuries. Look at the, see this, see this line of amenities here. Two of our cities get no bonus. One of our cities is taking a penalty. And so this city is actually taking a 10% penalty to its yields. If I go up in here, okay. And for the price of 27 gold and three gold per turn, I buy these, boom. Okay. Now that did upset the Aztecs, right? Which is fine. I refresh my cities. You can see now none of my cities are taking penalties. And then if I do this again, I buy these luxuries from the Aztecs, boom. All three of my cities are now ecstatic, which means I'm getting 20% um, extra production. That means every five turns, this city gets to take an extra turn. Okay, but that's how I want you to think about that. This city takes an extra turn every five turns, which is huge. Um, and that's true for gold. That's true for science. That's true for culture. That's true for faith. This is a massive upgrade to the potential of our empire. We're now making 24. Huge. Always be trading for amenities. Uh, this is the quick deals mod. It's really, really useful. Always be selling off your strategic resources unless you're using them. Uh, one other big mistake you've made is you haven't explored enough. Um, you also don't have your Diplo Quarter. That's going to be an important part of our victory as well. Because you can see here, the Diplomatic Quarter gives us plus one diplomatic favor for every delegation and embassy from a foreign civilization through diplomacy. And it also gives you an envoy that's built next to the city center.
He wants to buy my Epic of... Uh, I, this seems like a worthless trade. I also don't want to give him open borders because I don't like the idea of him being inside my borders. If we can kill this barb camp, though, we basically guarantee a golden age, which would be fantastic. Oh no, did I get the end of turn bug? All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it here for a few minutes while I wait. Okay, looks like I got the, uh, the infinite end of turn bug, so I'm going to try and do a quick auto save reload. I don't know how I got into the Harald Hardraga. I don't know how I got into this game. I am extremely confused. I pressed go back to main menu and somehow I ended up in that scenario. That is weird. But it also overrode, overri overrode my um, autosave, which is annoying. But we can, we can fix the empire again. It's like one of the stupidest bugs in the history of Civ. Um, and it looks like it just happened to me because the game just crashed. Right, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to do the same things, but not do the um, purchasing of luxuries. Unfortunately, that's just out because the Aztecs can be a little bit weird. We will just deal with that, right? It, it, it just is what it is. I'm wondering if it's okay to buy the luxuries directly off just the Aztecs. Maybe that will let me end the turn. It does. It looks like if I buy luxuries off another player, the Aztecs gets annoyed. So I'm just going to buy luxuries off them. I'm not going to buy off anyone else. They're that finicky. It's an unfortunate thing that we just have to deal with. Uh, the good news is we do have an Inquisition, so we can do quite a bit of work here. Um, and that doesn't quite put us up to the same level of happiness, but it gets us close. So let's see if we can't do and get the same high roll on the kill on the crossbow there. Excellent. Now, we definitely want to get our hands on mathematics here because we want the Diplo Quarter. And we definitely don't need to build ancient walls over here. Not before we have our granary. The biggest problem for this city right now is the fact that the city isn't able to grow. And that means food in the form of granaries, builders in the form of support from other cities. And so that's what we're going to be focusing on. All right, Sun Wukong looks like he managed to take that out. Let's have a little peek at this and we can hit this barb camp and it looks like we will be able to take it over. Now you did build a preserve, which I appreciate, even if I disagree with the decision. It's fine. That is a pair of caravels out of the dark. Jesus. I need to buy a caravel from the Ghostfish clan. Gold is going to be the way that I get myself out of a lot of issues here. Now we can use the combined attack power of both of these uh, Inquisitors to try and push back this religion. It looks like it did work. It has managed to push back the religion quite a bit. We will need to do more of that. We also need to buy pagodas and things of that nature. We also need to make sure the cities are working on food and production across the board. All right, let's go ahead and destroy this clan outpost. We can clear it out. That will get us the era score we need to basically hit a golden age. And I'm going to bring this builder down to start chopping in the capital. And we're going to wait and see if the Aztec decides to come back into our territory with a unit. First settler complete in Washington. The next one is about to come out of New Orleans. Um, there is a potential city over here. Uh, if I press down four and hold down control, you can see the resources that will be contained inside the city. In my opinion, this is enough resources. This is enough land to sustain a city. It's not going to be an incredible city, but it is good enough. I do want to know if it would be better if I settled on this little hold here. Now, I'm not super familiar with the this map in particular, but I do know that more cities is almost always better. So I'm definitely going to be settling this. I'll probably also be settling a city up here in the uh, deep tundra, partially just to get a hold of this land. And I'll also be settling another city here in the sort of Hudson Bay, I think it's called. Looks like a missionary stepped into my trap. So we'll go ahead and kill him. That will hopefully continue to spread our religion just that little bit, keep allowing us to basically defend our religion without having to expend much in terms of effort because we're just, we're using units that already exist to protect it. All right, we finished mathematics. We do want to get the Diplo Quarter. <sighs> You little fucker. Right, I'm going to go ahead and get myself a crossbow because that'll upgrade my city shot. I'm going to... There's nothing I can really bring down except for Sun Wukong. We'll just, we'll just have to settle for the fact that we're going to be taking some damage as time goes on here. But the critical... One of the biggest failures you've made this game is your lack of exploration. Like, you've explored this whole zone, like, pretty well but you have not been able to get down through his lands right you didn't get out into water you never researched shipbuilding to get out onto the water it's important and now it's going to be super hard to explore because it's late into the game so by leaving it so long you've actually made the game really hard for yourself so we want to trap this missionary inside our territory we want to hit him so he gets lowered strength and then we want to hit him hard now we can't quite reach him but he won't be able to get away i don't think there's also been a lot of forest fires over here you should have tried to settle this land um, this is really, really high quality land and getting Susan D of Auckland, which you did get at the very least, would have been really nice. 
Now, there is a path here to a tourism victory. I just think that the diplomatic victory is a little bit more reliable. It's a little bit more gameable. I think my goal is to get you into what I would consider to be a position you could win from. I don't think the position you're in currently is even remotely winnable. So we have a decent amount of work to do. All right, let's go ahead and chop here. That will immediately crack out another settler. This is going to be our first wave of potential settlements. Uh, we may look to expand out further. Going to war with the Aztecs with these current stats are just not viable, I'm afraid. I know that's what you wanted to do. It just can't be done. All right, let's get that kill. Hopefully a little bit of religion spread. We are slowly pushing him back. I'm going to grab myself another Inquisitor. There is a military emergency here. It looks like he's attacking Brazil. I'm not going to touch it. I don't think I can. Can we get this kill here? I would love to kill this guy. Boom, perfect. And then we'll get you guys down here to heal. And the important thing is here, we're slowly pushing back his religion. And by pushing back his religion, we are getting more followers. Um, he has to spend faith to try and rebuild his religion. Uh, he's wasting faith by attacking us religiously. All right, we settle a city right there. Oh my God, did you go for Settler Governor Plaza? You went for the Settler Governor Plaza and you never built settlers. I am disturbed. I'm shocked and disturbed. Always go for Granary first in your coastal cities, even worth chopping a lumber mill to get it sooner. You know, with Leventa, there is actually a pretty good pathway to a culture victory here with Colossal Head Spam. All it requires is enough land. We are playing with Monopolies. So with enough land, with a conquest of the Aztecs, you could get a tourism victory here. It's entirely possible. I wish I could just abstain from an emergency vote because I don't like the idea of me voting it down. Okay, this is going to be the last sale of my Diplo favor before the next government thing. And I'm doing it so I can buy a caravel and get this kill. Okay, let's go ahead and chop the woods. That will finish the granary. Um, we'll also grab ourselves the monument. We'll probably chop that out as well. Yerevan is pretty good here. Your apostles can choose from any possible promotion instead of receiving a random one. I'm going to take that suzerainty. That's plus two error score and a little bit of extra faith per turn. Converting the Aztecs will be an important part in any potential conquest of them. We have met Simon Bolivar. It's a pleasure to meet you, Simon. Um, very first thing you want to do is send him a delegation and get mutual open borders with him to improve your relationships with him. Very, very important. He will then like us. Now, look, he's not doing as, as well as the Aztecs. Which makes sense, because I think the Aztecs are in the process of killing him. Um, but at the very least, meeting other players gets us into a stronger position. We are going to go ahead and plug in Serfdom. Now we'll get two extra build charges every time we make a builder. Very, very important card. We want to get as much exploration information as possible. So this Caraval is incredibly important, because it's not only going to find us extra city-states, it's going to find us extra players. The more traders... Oh, Wukong might be dead. I might have pushed him a little too deep into the fog of war. He can't take on that many barbs alone. It's fine. We definitely want to get the siege tactics because both our tourism and our cult, both our, both, we want the Diplo favor. The Diplo favor potential there is huge. Siege tactics is a tech we want to get to. It would just take a very long time to get to it right now. So I'm going to focusing on cheaper, shorter term techs that are already boosted and then seeing if I can get boosts elsewhere. All right, another potential kill on a missionary. Should see the religion start to flip here. Perfect. And now, now we're entrenching our religion here and completely obliterating his. I think it's really important for me to build the kill with this game. I'm going to start producing builders in New Orleans to go send them to help other cities. I'm going to chop to finish this settler sooner, send him on his way, and then we will immediately begin work on the kill one. I wish I could put it somewhere else to get a better... If I could put it here, I could get a plus... Well, do I lose a chop? Do I put it here and lose a chop? Is the question. Can I afford to lose one of these chops? I think I have to afford to lose one of these chops because in the long term, this will give me two really good theater squares that will help a lot with culture. Yeah, Wukong got wrecked because there's a literal infinite number of barbs up here. Although, yeah, no escape for him, sadly. Okay, Granary completed in Cincinnati. Let's get the monument for the culture boost. We found Hunza, that is lovely. We'll take back Susan T of Leventa. We like to fight for that. We met Lautaro, which is nice. How many players are in this game? A decent amount. All right, poor Wukong died, but that does mean we get another relic, which means more faith, more tourism too. It's not the total end of the world. We do need to deal with this apostle, and we can because we have the inquisitors in the area. All right, chop 100 production into that. How much to buy a builder? Would love to buy another one. 300 gold, anything I can sell. And we're getting closer. Right, we do have a golden age, which is helpful. 
I think Heartbeat of Steam is our best one. Our campus districts giving us a little bit of production is nice. Let's go ahead and buy a builder in Washington. We need to get some of these tiles improved and chomped and built. And Well, the good news is we do have the faith required to recall some of these heroes. Now, Hercules is the one we would really like to recall because he can fast build districts, which can get our empire up and running so much faster. All right, let's go ahead and settle you. We settled New York up in non-New Yorkian territory. And we need to like have a discussion about the most efficient way to make colossal heads. And so to do this, I'm going to build a network. Let's just say in theory, we just placed down colossal heads, okay? So for every build charge here, in this arrangement of seven, I am getting two faith per turn. That faith per turn is then getting converted into tourism, okay? Let's imagine this is the perfect scenario, okay? I'm getting two faith per turn turned into tourism. So this is worth, in total, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times two, this is worth 14 tourism, okay? That's how much this is worth. Let's say I took the exact same configuration and I put a single forest here in the center. Now I'll be getting six times three adjacency, which is 18. So we know that somewhere between completely covering my empire in colossal heads and sprinkling in woods, there is an optimal number. And I believe the perfect network looks something like this. This will give me each colossal head is touched by at least two woods, which means it's worth four, eight, 12, plus three is 15, which is higher than what this is, plus I get lumber mills. And if I put more lumber mills like here and I continue the pattern, it just gets more and more efficient. This is, in my opinion, the most efficient way to lay out colossal heads and just there is like a perfect way that this pattern will fit over my territory, right? There is a perfect way it will. Like there is an optimal location for me to start doing this. But I'm just going to assume I'm going to place this lumber mill and then base the rest of it. Because, because I know it's optimal locally, I know it will be somewhat opt optimal globally. That's how I'm going to be doing this, is making the decision of how this tundra area specifically is going to look. Basically, adjacent to every lumber mill, there will be only colossal heads. And I, I believe colossal heads can be placed on snow. Uh, no, colossal heads cannot be placed on snow. Okay, so no snow heads, which sucks, but is also objectively fine. This decision that I'm making here may look insane, but it will give us our best shot at a culture victory, in my opinion. It's hard to fully explain the, the, the reasoning behind this, but it's just like, it's simpler than planning it's not appeal, it's not dependent upon appeal. And we can use our faith, the faith that is generated by this huge lattice to create to create rock bands. Um, and I think it's generally true is if a lumber mill hits at least two colossal heads, it is of equal value to just putting a colossal head. It is, if it hits at least two colossal heads, it's better value than colossal heads in terms of value, even though it takes more build charges, because it provides the same amount of tourism, but also provides a productive tile that you can use to develop other things. Let's harvest that deer and use that overflow production from the monument to flow out into other stuff. Okay, we're dealing with an apostle invasion. Killing it will get us Catholicism and Protestantism, which is fantastic. We will probably eventually look to make inquisitors to go fight them on their own territory, which actually, or sorry, um, apostles to go fight them on their own territory, which is probably the next phase. Now that we can get any anything, we can just go for the fight people one. Oh, wow, you didn't actually get your tobacco. Shocked by this. All right, taking a look at this, I definitely want a theater square here, a theater square here, and then in between them, it would be ideal if we could get an entertainment complex. One, two, three which means this is not going to be a theater square, which means I could have had an extra chop in here. I didn't need to do that. It's fine that I did. It's important to note that this is what I'm going to do in the late game. This isn't what I'm building towards. This is me just thinking about what my late game for this land is going to look like. Um, because in the not too, not too distant future, we're going to have access to conservation and ideally flight. Oh, somebody else built Killwood. That is depressing. I'm going to use the overflow to go into a foreign ministry mostly for the Diplo favor. Uh, we are playing Owls of Minerva. 
which is very much so a Diplo favor win, which is making me rethink this whole thing I was doing up here. Maybe we don't want to do this. I think a Diplo win is the way. All right, let's pop down the tobacco industry. There's no other luxury in the city. So this is just straight up an improvement to the city. This apostle is going to take the um, debater promotion, as will my next um, apostle. Let's harvest there to finish the granary. We'll also get to work on the monument in here. I will buy the jade tile because it's the only tile representing any type of production in this area for a very, very long time. If literally anyone declares war on me, I think this game is just over, by the way. All right, we settled Cleveland. The world did not rejoice. All right, the Aztecs have denounced me. I don't know if we can defend against a concerted attack from him. I think this is roughly the layout that I want for Boston and Cincinnati. This supports my victory condition the best, as does just generally following my nose when it comes to the Alza Minerva, right? We want to get the Gilded Vaults. We want to get the trade routes up. We want to trade with city-states. That's our goal. That's where, we, that's where we benefit heavily. So I think pushing in that direction is always a good idea, and it'll lead us to a place with a lot of gold. Plus, we have Auckland, which is a lot of potential production. I'm not building settlers for a little while, so I'm going to plug in Diplomatic League. Um, and then put a point into Samarkand for gold. Now, one thing, okay, the Aztecs don't want us settling near him. I was going to say we could look to settle. If we got a cultural alliance with the Aztecs, which might be the way to have gone. If you'd gone Voigtsingers, we could have got a cultural alliance with him. We could have settled all this land. We've done a massive cultural push. But the problem is you pick the wrong secret society if you want to go for a culture game. But I don't know if you want to go for a culture game. Now, we do have plus five combat strength on our home continent, plus another 10 from our religion if we can get our religion into him and inside of his territory. So it's not like we're without hope. We do have some things we can do. It's a 15 combat strength boost we have potentially. But in order to even begin to take advantage of that, we definitely need to convert some of his cities to our religion. And we need to catch up a little bit technologically. I don't think we can kill him without the religion spread. At the very, very least. All right, let's get this kill. Spread our religion. Protestantism has spread. We want these guys to stick together as they fight their way through enemy territory. Two hits from those guys will get will kill basically anything. Chop here to get the walls so we can start killing off some of these boats that are harassing us. Um, this is also a harbor and commercial hub city. It just absolutely makes sense in my mind to do this combo. Okay, nice. We got the monument in here. Let's get, let's get started on the aqueduct and we'll start planting a few farms around. This city needs growth tiles, so three farms would be really, really nice here. Make all the difference in the world. Harvest the woods to get the aqueduct sooner. We found Torres del Paine. We found the Hermetic Order. Excellent. Right, let's chop in the capital to finish that building. We will overflow into the library to get that small boost in science. We're going to reassign Pingala to the capital now that the chopping is done there. And we're going to assign Magnus to Boston because there's at least three to four chops in here that we want to do. Indoctrination could help quite a bit. Um, let's do it. That's going to get us plus one spy capacity as well as a wild card slot. Well, two spy capacity. Right, aqueduct completed. Let's finish the ancient walls. We do want to start building walls now as they may lead to long-term benefits. Ooh, this is an excellent opportunity for conflict. I want to wait though. Potential for lots of kills. I'll make a lumber mill in this city because it doesn't actually have a workable tile. Uh, while it is good to chop, you also want to have at least one workable tile if the city has one population. Just seems like a good move. Uh, that's my opinion. What do I know? I just play this game professionally. We're going to go ahead and pick up cartography for a number of reasons. First of all, it would be nice to have access to the caravel. Second of all, it's nice to get the plus two gold from fishing boats and the ability to, to navigate ocean tiles with said caravels, um, which will allow us to further explore the world and learn more about the other players that are in the game. We found an enemy missionary. Let's take him on. Excellent. Now we're starting to see some serious religious pressure in the heart of the enemy territory. While we would like to chop all this land, we want to wait until Magnus is established. Yes, we do have to wait another five turns for the chopping to happen. However, it increases the efficiency of the chop by 50%, which means we get 50% more infrastructure for the same amount of production chopping. Chopping is almost always worth it. There are only a handful of scenarios in which I would consider not chopping. And even then, it's a perhaps I should chop later situation. Okay, I think I can get this Catholicism kill. Boom, boom. Very nice. Protestantism is spreading heavily inside the Incan Empire. Can I get this kill? Oh, not quite. 
I need you to fall you back to safety and bring this Inquisitor over. I'm gonna buy myself another Inquisitor for kills. Is this a debater? Is that why he's so strong? I remember there being something weird about attacking into the water with um, Inquisitors. I just don't remember what it was off the top of my head. I do think it would be cool if you could uh, faith convert barb camps. Kind of a fun idea. Like th these may be barbarians, but they're our barbarians. These are Christian bar. These are Christian barbarians. You know what I'm saying? God fearing barbarians. I do think the Nobel Peace Prize is good if we can win it. Um, in fact, it's probably one of the best ones. I'll put two votes into that. Usually, a good thing to vote for is melee, so I'll put four votes into that. And usually, a good candidate for this is the person with the most um, Diplo favor. So Mansa Musa, for example, could be a good candidate for this. It might not work out. It might. I usually, I don't know how the AI usually votes in those particular ones. A lot of the World Congress stuff I know pretty well. Um, so it looks like a whole bunch of people voted for a whole bunch of people. I So like, I could never have known the person they were all going to vote, vote for. In theory, I could have voted for Sibon Bolivar. I gambled and voted for Mansa Musa thinking that he had the most votes and he would vote for himself. And had he voted for himself, he might have won. But he didn't vote for himself. It's sometimes hard to predict what the AI will do. The Nobel Peace Prize did pass. And with it, we actually have a pretty good chance of getting another Diplo favor. I'm going to encourage the city to work the farm so that it can grow more. Um, each citizen in a city eats two food. So the capital city can support two. Each of these farms can support it or support one. The capital city produces two food, so it can support one pop. Each of these farms produces three, meaning it, it can support 1.5 pops, meaning that three three food farms can support 4.5 pops, meaning this one food here from this iron means we can very, very easily support like six population in here very, very comfortably with these three farms. So farms actually increase the capacity of your city by a decent margin. Um, let's get this kill. We don't actually need... Oh, he is a debater. That's what made him so difficult. Okay, let's pull you back for a heal. We'll move you forward into an interception position. And we'll move you back into an interception position. This guy has regular intel. Difficulty... Yeah, we'll need to do a little bit of flanking to fight him off. When can I buy my next caravel from you? Uh, in four turns. Okay, so we will be able to go up to three caravels, which will allow us to explore the world pretty damn quick. Magnus is now established here. We're going to break this. We're going to harvest. And I want to make sure you're owned by the right city. You are. Okay. Which means we can harvest there. That's the harbor complete. We definitely want the lighthouse for the trade route. So we'll harvest through on that front. A builder in the capital was completed. I think we go for the Diplo quarter. And hopefully I can afford another apostle. Next turn I can afford another apostle. I can make him a debater and send him in to fight for... Um, our religion inside the Aztec Empire, giving us better coverage. Okay, harvest this, that will get us a lighthouse. We could go for the mausoleum here. It's not a bad mausoleum city. I guess I'll put one turn into a trader and then hopefully any overflow will go into a potential mausoleum. I'll grab suzerainty of Samarkand. Um, we discovered Maui. That will get us plus two gold uh, as well as access to the trading dome. And some pretty good scouting info actually up and around here. God, I would love to get settlers over there. Ugh, the Aztecs just started to settle the great north. The, see, you should have been out here, man. You should have been cozying up to the Aztecs. You should have been making great friends with them. You should have been out here settling. Here's the thing. Y your biggest failure this game is just a failure to settle and to have unrealistic goals, like to go to war when you had 20 science against 200. Even now, I've got 42 against 200. Look how far ahead of me he is on the tech tree. Like, we're so behind, and I, I'm churning as many cities as I, as I can. In theory, I could have filled this whole area with cities and we would still probably not catch up till turn 250. But almost always, your gameplay issues come down to not making enough settlers. Almost always. If you think you're not good at Civ for any reason, ask yourself, did I make enough settlers and builders? Seriously, almost every save file that I see, it almost Every case, it boils down to the fact that the player didn't make enough settlers and builders. They are the two fundamental units that you build your empire with. They are the two fundamental parts of what actually makes your empire into an empire. It makes your, your civilization into a civilization. The cities and the land that you improve, the things that you do to that land. Okay, so we're going to do a little bit of a trick here. This is what I call a pre-chop. If I were to just place the mausoleum right here, it would kill this forest. 
and I would have a very nice mausoleum, but I want to get the, I want to chop the forest. I want to get this 112 production. So what you do is make sure you have the unit queue activated so you can queue things up like this. Make sure the queue is empty. Then you chop the tile that you want to place the building on, 112 production, and now the mausoleum only takes 42 turns. Boom. And then we can then chop to even further, skadoosh, finish it even faster. And that, my friends, is the magic of the pre-chop. Now, when it comes to trade routes, we can either trade for gold or we can trade for envoys. I'm going to trade with Auckland because I want to maintain suzerainty with them. Plus, every time I trade with a... Also, did you actually get it? You, you did trade with Leventa, so you do have a trading post there. That's good work. But yeah, I'm going to trade with Auckland because I want envoys with Auckland. I want to maintain that suzerainty. I'm also playing the... Uh, Roosevelt Cor Corollary, which is Envoy sent to a city-state you have a trade route with, count as two. This actually combines really, really nicely with the Alza Minerva, which is you get a trade route to a city-state rewards an envoy. We actually get two envoys every time we send a trade route to a city-state, so that's a huge W. We're going to grab Researcher on Pingala so that we can pump up the science in the capital. We're now up to 32 science, up to 53 science, okay? So in a mere 30 turns, I've nearly tripled i've more than tripled your science i've more than tripled your science i've nearly tripled the size of your empire I, if you have built a good empire i shouldn't be able to do that in 30 turns this is the kind of fundamental gameplay that you really need to be looking out for that's amazing there's a frigate in this lake <laughs> oh another unit we can fight and kill ideally we would be fighting uh daoist units so we can um we can double dip but i will fight more than happy to fight Grand Colombian units on this territory as well. Why farms, by the way? If you're wondering why I'm building a lot of farms, it's because there's nothing else I can do with this land until I have lumber mills. And at the very least, farms provide me with growth. Growth gives me science. Growth gives me culture. It's plain, so it does also get me a small boost in my uh, production. So it's not entirely a waste. We found the Galapagos. That'll get us another era score. Now, exploration is key to saving our bacon this game. I right, plus one era score on that. There's cartography. Um, we're going to pop in here. We're going to hire another caravel. You're going to be sent immediately to the east. I'm also going to be looking to get gold. Um, I could sell my jade. I think that's actually totally reasonable. Sell that jade. Also selling my iron and horses to anyone. Boom. I can use that gold to upgrade a galley to a caravel, meaning I now have three ships that I can explore the world with. I can send one to Europe, one to Africa, and one to Asia, which will cover the three most likely places for there to be other players for me to discover and trade with. We're also going to unlock military engineering because niter is a resource I can sell to the AI. That gold can be used to increase the pace of my empire. Farm here. This whole area should have been filled with farms, in my opinion. Um, while you do have that really, 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 really nice pantheon, Earth Goddess, I would much rather just have a lot more population because with a lot more population, I can build more holy sites. I can build more buildings. I can get more faith. The faith yield is cool. But man, you need to have improved territory. The improved territory needs to be the priority. Almost every case. All right, let's go ahead and take a fight here and a fight there. Oh, you can't quite reach that. That's okay. We'll get him next turn. All of the chopping in Boston has been completed. I'm going to move a... I'm going to move Magnus over to Cincinnati so we can get to work on that place. And this guy's going to head west. I'm probably going to dip down towards Australia real quick because if Australia is unsettled, I could go settle it right now. All I have to do is get settlers through Panama. Diplo Quarter has been completed in the capital, so we can go ahead and pick up the consulate. This is going to give us plus two influence points per turn. This influence will be used to get more envoys. The plus four faith, plus four gold is really, really nice. It's going to, it just, it scales our build, right? We're already playing as a monarchy where we get plus one housing per level uh, and the 50% influence points. So we're very much so about building walls, expanding our influence, getting control of city states. Um, I believe I have a city state button somewhere. I don't remember. I don't remember where it is. I used to have a city state quest button. I don't know what I did to it. Sometimes it's there, sometimes it isn't. Kumasi is a fantastic pickup here in this particular game. It's going to give us a huge boost to our trade routes. Um, this Boston to Auckland trade route now has eight gold and two culture in it, which is fantastic. Um, and that will get better and better as we build more districts in here. All right, let's get the adjacency. We kill this guy. I'm going to get myself a guru so I don't have to retreat these guys to heal. It's a simpler. I think if I could kill these two gurus, it would push me up into where I need to be in terms of religion, expression, dominance, power. We're going to drop a mine. Mines are almost always worth it because they don't need any adjacency to be good. And let's start moving builders up to Cincinnati to do the next wave of four chops right there. Oh, there's Bologna. 
My Bologna. Do, 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 do. My, 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 my Bologna. All right, drop the harbor in here. Unfortunately, this city is going to suck for a very, very long time. At the very least, we have Auckland helping, making the coastal towers a little bit better. There is something we can do by sending a builder over there, which is what we are going to do. Oh, hello. Uh, potential apostle kill here. Not quite a kill, but we did knock him back pretty hard. Can I move you down here to intercept? I'm also going to move you guys back generally towards the um, guru. Look at this, unoccupied New Zealand. Oh my God. Oh, it's practically empty. All right, I'm going to drop um, conscription. I'm going to plug back in colonization. I probably should have go gone for Hicks on Tracones. This might actually be Hawaii or something. Who knows? Maybe Hawaii is over here. I don't know. But look, it's empty land. What you need right now is land, dude. Land is always the answer to your problems in Civ. Can you get more land? If yes, get more land. This little island will save you. I guarantee it. Uh, we want to head towards mass production. That's how we get shipyards. Shipyards are extremely useful for this kind of a game. I think we have a fishing tile here. So we want to build a harbor in this city. And then adjacent to this, we want there to be a commercial hub. So I think right there is fine. Um, so let's get started on that harbor. But first, we always get the monument because culture is extremely valuable for advancing through the cultural tree. Looks like we got ourselves a free kill. A nice bomb of faith. And we'll position our guys around this guru. I did spot a few missionaries off into the um, water. And we know that we need to look for Africa to find Mali. The ghost fish clan over here was destroyed, which means we could potentially settle a city there. Do we want to take over Florida? Probably not anymore. Maybe earlier in the game, it would have been viable. If if this city hadn't have just like been real fat and expanded out this way, it would have been worth it. But right now, I don't think it's worth it. Also, he starts down here. He starts so far away. Honestly, you have to like, if the Aztec starts down here, you have to fuck up so much to let them expand this freely. I'm going to be real with you. The only way this happens is through major errors. Um, let's go ahead and place the harbor in this city. We'll work on the monument. I know that's not a very nice thing to, do, to say. Also, I just uh, healed all of my religious units, which means we can go back in on the hunt. Another tiny island in the Atlantic that you could get. Well, probably not this one. Now, um, we did meet the Gauls. Let's go ahead and send them a delegation. Whenever you meet a player, send them a delegation, send them open borders, sell them your resources. Hey, you want to buy some horses? You want to buy some of these? No. Nope. Just always be looking for opportunities to sell things. We got the consulate in the capital. I'm going to start working on more settlers. Oh, another round of kills for me. Thank you. The conversions are slowly happening in this area. Very, very, very happy about that. Okay, Cincinnati, buy tile, buy tile. Let's go ahead and chop to finish the grove. It's not the greatest grove in the world, but it will, it's at least infrastructure, right? This is not a very good city. I'm going to be real with you. I would not have placed the preserve. It's fine that you did, I just wouldn't have done it. Let's get that industrial zone up, it would be nice. Let's go ahead and chop and chop. Industrial zone is completed and then let's chop out that workshop, boom. So we just massively increased the amount of production this city has. Also on a production turn by turn basis, but also just in terms of how much the city has production, like has done production, you know what I mean? Like we just, we just shoved a bunch of production inside the city. Let's talk to Matsumusa. We'll go ahead and do open borders with him. Um, and purely that's just so we can get up closer to his land and get a better knowledge of the world and have a better chance of finding city states that are coast, like coastal or near coast. We can get a third district inside New Orleans. It has a encampment, a holy site. We could go for an aqueduct and industrial zone, which to me seems like a reasonable direction to push this. But I may go like armory, industrial zone, aqueduct, like so. Cincinnati will be a great location for me to spam builders out of because it has all of its districts completed, which is fantastic, which means probably this next governor title is going to go into Liang to go into Cincinnati. I'm also going to go ahead and improve that. Now, in terms of working tiles, Cincinnati is growing pretty actively. So I'm going to go ahead and get a couple of mines in here so that its production will continue to grow. Looks like we can snag another kill over here. Slowly but surely we take over their religion. All right, let's see if we can sneak into the Mediterranean. We're likely to meet a lot of players and city-states there. Chinguetti is the most important city-state for us to get control of here because it's going to massively increase our faith uh, faith ability. It's really sad that we didn't get Kilwa. 
Sometimes you have to live with these things, though. Uh, diplomatic service is, I think, our next goal. Getting access to the Chancery, as well as the ability to create spies. Spies are really good catch-up mechanics. We're going to appoint Liang so that we can put her into Cincinnati, um, because Magnus is done there. And by appointing her in there, we will get plus one build charge on all the builders we plan to build there. And then we'll be able to distribute those around our empire. Um, another area where we could get a decent amount of chomps is probably in Cleveland. And we could significantly increase the pace of development in Cleveland by moving Magnus over there and preparing to do some chopping. Boom, there's a mine. That mine is for New York. These two mines are for Cincinnati. Um, I think I would prefer for you to work the food and then work the mines. New York needed another productive tile um, to get it up to like anything resembling, you know, production. Philadelphia also needs a productive tile. So I will put a lumber mill here, even though I normally wouldn't. The fact that this basically triples the city's productivity is just too important. Brilliant. We met Ramses. It's an honor to meet you. We can exchange information on our capitals and we can continue to explore along here. Remember, first time you meet a player, you send him a delegation, you open the deals, you'd get mutual open borders and you walk away. We met Venice. We met the Vatican City. Like we're finally actually getting knowledge about the world. Mausoleum Mahalakarnassus is finished. That's plus one science, plus one faith and plus one co culture on all the coastal tiles of Boston, right? This makes Boston super valuable when it comes to developing our culture, our science, and our faith. But it also means we want to grow a lot in this city because the more we grow, the more tiles we work, the more tiles we work, the more we grow, the more yields we get. Production is weak in here. That's a fair criticism of the city, but we're going to go ahead and get the commercial hub because we want that gold. Eventually, Reina, I believe, will go in here uh, because Reina has the ability to double the adjacency of commercial hubs and harbors. And since there's a commercial hub and a harbor in the city, it's really valuable. Um, we are building harbors as well as commercial hubs because we have the Alza Minerva, which can score two trade routes from harbors and harbors and um commercial hubs very very valuable so we can't get through the vatican city's territory so we're just going to go ahead and explore back out it was useful to pop in here there's a meteor shower we could pick up some an extra horse unit i'm going to go ahead and send you over there to grab that and what we want to do is to surround this guy so we can get the kill on him and that just converted two cities as well as flipping this dude's capital against him that was a massive coup a huge coup for the religion so much so that I think it would be worth it now to recruit a pair of missionaries and send them deep in to try to get this city to flip to me. If he follows Crusade and he's on my continent and I can get a military alliance against him, that is plus 20 combat strength, which means he can be one tech level ahead and I'm still acting as if I'm a tech level ahead. So true potential here for the late game conquest of this continent. I was trying to find Australia, but I don't actually rightfully know where it is on this map. There it is. We found Oceania, which means in any of my cities that aren't doing anything super important, settlers are the go-to unit and are being sent out. Okay, this is huge. Another potential kill on this. This could be like the game winning sl Come on, you're gonna, you're gonna do me like this? It's not good. I think uh, establishing city-state trade routes it's really valuable here. It's worth eight culture per turn in my capital, right? That's a huge amount of culture. Huge. It's an absurd amount of culture. They said it couldn't be done. They said no man could recover from this, this position. I am no man. I am the man. The myth. The legend. The hero of ages. All right. Boom. Convert that city. How close are these cities to flipping? Honestly, these cities are actually pretty close to flipping. If we could just get a little bit of missionary work going on up there. <laughs> I don't even have to say it anymore. That's the best part. I don't even have to say that I was going to do it with your mom. You knew I was going to say it. Me and your mom, we do missionary work all the time. All right, we're going to declare friendship with you. We're going to get a military alliance with him. This guy is going to be my best friend for dealing with Mexico. And also, um, I can settle for sugar. It's kind of an interesting move. I'm just going to hope our settlers don't get killed. If our settlers do get killed, it is not the end of the world. It just sucks. But this is th these are, in essence, gambles that we're making, right? That we're coming down here to Australia. We're going to try to make a, a play for Australia. I think this is meant to be New Zealand. We could get two cities on New Zealand. Um, there's Huey Tawakali. There's the Chancery, which is excellent. Definitely want the Chancery. Probably want to buy it. We want to get the civil engineering because this is where we can get better builder pr production policy cards. 
We got the builder in Charleston. Let's go ahead and get to work on the harbor in there. All right, we got a guru we can kill and we need to kill it. Oh yeah, look at that conversion. Boom. We're seeing serious, we're, we're seeing serious gains here, which will piss the Aztecs off. Um, I'm okay with that. Plus, uh, we're also getting a little bit of science from beliefs here. 17 from beliefs, okay? Plus one science for every four followers of this religion. That is sick. 25% gold in the host city. Honestly, Cleveland is a good city to have this jade thing. So I will put it in Cleveland because I plan to generate a lot of gold out of Cleveland. Okay, we did meet Australia, um, which means he's down here, which is which sucks because now we can't now we can't colonize Australia and we've got another player who's really strong in the game. I hate it. We have to buy our luxuries off the Aztec. I hate that I can't because he, he just he gets cr he gets cranky if you buy stuff that he doesn't have. At the very least, we can talk to Australia. We can establish a resident embassy. We can do open borders. I should probably establish a resident embassy with everyone I can. Okay, one more convert on Ixtapaluca should do it. Um, basically, every time you convert it, every time you use a convert action, I think it removes 10% of the pressure of other religions in the city. So missionaries are quite good at cleaning up in certain instances. Nice, he's bringing back missionaries to try and get control of his religion because he's losing it. We've met Sweden. It's an honor to meet you, Sweden. We met Ethiopia. It's an honor to meet you too, Menelik. Signy is there, not a Madagascar. We also met Mitla. It's quite exciting. A lot of really nice city states this game are around. Monument completed in New York, which is excellent. We can get to work on that harbor, um, which is how we develop the city into the future. It'll take a long time for the city to pay itself off, but it will pay itself off. Don't forget, it's also bringing in a trickle of science. It's bringing in a trickle of culture. And it also is just slowly enveloping and controlling this land over here for us, right? It's slowly bringing us... Oh my God, you built an airport? You're insane. Slow and steady wins the race. Boom. All right. Oh, are you joking me? He's... Why can't I attack him? He's on a tile that someone placed an encampment, so I need to wait. He needs to step off, which I'm pretty sure was like a was like a dance movie. Or was that step up? I don't know. I don't follow dance movies anymore. <clears throat> I mean, I never follow dance movies. New potato lore dropped in the comments. This, that's going to be it. I know it. I'm going to be the dance movie guy now. Listen, it was one summer every year. <laughs> All right, we found the Great Barrier Reef. I mean, look, th this exploration, look at this, look at this empire that I've managed to claw back from the brink. I would even go as far as to say this empire is in a strong position to win a Diplo victory as long as you can get the Statue of Liberty. It's in a strong position to take on the Aztecs. All you got to do is make sure Simon Bolivar is at war with them and you have roughly equal tech. I probably wouldn't attack before artillery and artillery balloons. But you can take all of this empire, totally, and then switch to whatever victory you want. I think a big mistake people make is in the pursuit of science and culture, is they try to make science and culture buildings, which is not what you need. If you want science and culture, you need to make your empire bigger. If you want great scientists, you build campuses. If you want great works, you build uh, culture districts. If you want culture and science, you build a fat as fuck empire. I'm talking all the stuff. Oh, no, I don't know where I was going with that. Just, just ev all the settlers, all the builders, everything. Okay, looks like he's not going to move off this tile, which is fine. That's his right. Uh, Sweden, resident embassy. At the very least, you'll give me open borders. Thank you. And we can pop in here and have a little gander. This would be so much easier if the Aztecs weren't in the game, purely because they create that um, luxury bug. Like, I'm pretty sure. I'm going to make a save file right here. But, like, there's a non-zero chance they crash the game here. So, like... What I should have been doing this whole game is purchasing all of these luxury resource is. Now my empire is cranking out 20% more yields across the entire board, right? Like imagine if my empire was going 20% faster. But if I end my turn, the Aztecs are going to be like, <laughs> he's basically going to have a little whinge at me. Wait, it actually worked? It let me continue? Okay, whatever. I feel like I've put this empire not in a winning position, but in a position that could win. So uh, I guess um, the save file will be sent back to him. Um, but, uh, but hopefully this is useful, right? It would take me, I, I've played this for two hours. I think two hours is a reasonable amount of time to put into saving someone's save file, in particular because it's useful content, right? It really, again, it just comes down to settle more cities. Like, 
people are sitting up here, what the hell does New York do? And it's like, New York doesn't need to do anything because the second it finishes its harbor, I will have enough gold per turn to be able to immediately buy both a um, lighthouse, which will give me a trade route in gold, and a shipyard, which will give me um, production, food, gold, and don't forget scaling gold from the city states, right? Scaling gold plus four in every shipyard. All I have to do is get, if I get all four of these up to level four, every shipyard is worth 16 gold per turn. You spend about a thousand gold on a shipyard. It pays itself back really quickly. It's, it becomes this, this, this looping, writhing mass of gold that's just pumping into your veins and, and it becomes extremely, extremely powerful. But yeah, settle more cities. That would be the advice I'd give to, this, to the person who played. Settle more cities, make more builders chop more, have a coherent game plan. The problem you went with here is you kind of went in two directions. You went, but like you went militaristic, you went science, you went diplomatic and you went tourism. And then you went like, you're playing like a, a pretty damn good tourism sieve, but then you went for a diplomatic thing, but then you were trying to win by tourism. Were you like, you didn't have a coherent plan. Do you get what I'm saying? I didn't look at your empire and be like, I know how this person is trying to win. Like you built the thing that makes you make settlers better and then didn't build settlers. You know what I'm saying? Like this is so, your 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 actions aren't following logically. Anyway, I'm going to call that the end of the episode. I want to thank you guys very much for watching. I love you all very much. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.